All right, so in this video, I'm going to explain how to write the formula and the names for molecular compounds. And just as a quick review, remember, in a molecular compound, rather than donating electrons, which is done in an ionic compound, they are shared. And so this is just a quick intro to show you these two electrons are being shared by fluorine, and the line represents electrons being shared. Here, for example, you can see carbon and hydrogen. All of these are sharing two electrons, and you show the sharing of electrons with lines. Now, we're not going to go through this in this chapter. We're going to go through it in next semester. But it's important for you to know that a molecular compound is one that is between two nonmetals, a nonmetal and a nonmetal. Okay? And so when we're writing the formulas for molecular compounds, we can't actually cross charges because we don't have a metal and a nonmetal. So instead, what we do to represent the number of each atom, we represent it with a prefix. So one, if you have one atom, it's mono, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nana, and ten is deca. And so you just put the prefix in front of the atom, and that tells you how many you have. So for example, if I have P2O5, I have two phosphoruses and I have five oxygens. And so what I would write for the name of this, this is going to be diphosphorus. And then five oxygens, it's going to be pent, pentoxide. Okay, now I knew that I needed to use my prefixes because I have two nonmetals, phosphorus and oxygen. The only time you use prefixes is if you have two nonmetals. If you have an ionic compound, use all the rules that we've been talking about before. Now, there is, there are two quick rules that you need to keep in mind that are kind of exceptions to this naming. And the first one is you don't start the name of a molecular compound with mono. So don't start with mono. And the other thing is, if you have a repetition of vowels, you're going to get rid of one of the vowels. So don't repeat vowels. So an example of this, I actually already did in the previous problem. Pentoxide should have been pentaoxide. But instead of a, uh, a, uh, it's just pentoxide, not pentaoxide. All right? So one. Last example to show you the don't start with mono. One compound that you are extremely familiar with that you are exhaling as you watch this video is CO2. Now you know that that is carbon dioxide, but now you can actually understand where that name comes from. I have one carbon, but remember I can't start with mono, so I say carbon instead of monocarbon, and then I have two oxygens, so it's going to be carbon dioxide. So you keep the IDE ending for these just like what we had for ionic compounds, but then you use prefixes, and that's it.